Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great. Today, we are coming to you from Tampa, Florida, and we are at the Tampa Automotive Museum. Now, I am not an expert on cars, as many of you know. I just happen to like to look at cars. My grandfather is 95 years old. His favorite vlogs that I do are going to the car museum, so I love to hit them whenever possible. So if I mispronounce a car name that was around, you know, a decade before I was born, please let it slide and enjoy the ride. So Days with Jordan the Lion, this museum, it begins right now. Wow, this is amazing. This is a family's custom collection and they have a penchant for collecting automobiles that are innovative for their time. So it's not just a bunch of old cars, it's all kinds of stuff. And they have, I think 72 cars on display that we're gonna see, and 17 of them of them are one of a kind. So the first one's a 1909 Daimler. They said there's actually a family who owns the factory behind this is the family that owns this car museum so that's what keeps the museum going that is a 1951 riona yes. one of a kind and a prototype yeah. okay, thanks. wow 1927 avion's voice in Four cylinders with a 1600cc, which gave the car a 65 mile per hour speed. For 1927, not bad. And that is a 1928 Willys Knight. Model 56. So this is a 1910 Elmore, the car with no valves. Man, beautiful cars. Now this is a 1913 Stearns Knight. That is also one of a kind. They said anything with a gold star up here by the flag means it's one of a kind. It says Frank B. Stearns built his first car in his family's Cleveland, Ohio basement in 1896 and later moved his factory to the family barn with the support of his father. In 1898, he formed F.B. Stearns and Company and built several varieties of small cars. Beautiful car. And look at the emblem. There's some of the floor rudders for the sterns. The steering wheel been, would have been on the opposite side of what we're used to. And look at the seating. That is a 1937 Peugeot Darlamat. It was named after Emile Darlamat, was a Peugeot dealer in Paris. The Eclipse was a hard top convertible with the top being swallowed by the trunk. Designed in the early 1930s for Peugeot automobiles. Wow, pretty cool. Man, I love the designs of these. An award winner. Now this room has an amazing collection. <laughs> a little bit of everything. I don't even know what the heck that is. We'll check that out, but 1942 Mathis. Also a prototype, so one of a kind. It's a firm in Alsace, France that produced cars between 1910 and 1950. Before World War II, Mathis was the number four car manufacturer in France. Car in front of you was presented at the Paris Auto Show 1946. 
Unfortunately, the French government refused Mathis access to supplies to manufacture the car. Huh. Take a look at the crazy body on it, though. The back end is where it gets kind of crazy. That's about the best full size picture I can get of it. And it's a three seater. Now over here we have a three wheeler, 1931 BSA. And yeah, it just has two wheels in the front, as you can see there. And then one wheel in the back. Right here, this green one, that's a 1930 Morgan three-wheeler, which also looks like it would have sat too. That three-wheeler is just titled Ben's. The Benz Patent Motor Wagon, built in 1885. The motor in the back, pretty interesting collection. One of the interesting things they told me when I came in was they said all of these cars, even though they're really cool and everything, they all are meant to work so they all do work and the family sometimes takes them out of here for their own personal driving <laughs> probably not this one <laughs> looks like it's put together with uh, a distillery fartier de cugnot look at that the wheel down in here he's steering up here he's got his bourbon behind him and then a couple of two big giant back wheels. Like I said, these people just, they love to collect stuff that was innovative. And wow. This is a 1930 Tatra open tour. So it has no no windows actually you see it has a windshield but doesn't look like any any windows in there huh yeah I'm seeing nothing to roll up the sides or anything in there so better hope it ain't raining this better be a California car and then over here we have 1932 Citroen track half track now take a look at this look at all everything that's going on you got a couple of regular wheels up front look in the back like track tank wheels or something regular on the inside wow and then look at the i love the emblems on a lot of these they're so cool Now look at it from the side. Pretty funky. It's called a 1943 Kubel wagon. It says it was the equivalent of the Jeep. Says it was known as the bucket tub car, equivalent of the American Jeep during World War II. It was first developed by Dr. Ferdinand Ponch and by his son Ferry as a buggy for fun. When the war was looming the horizon, the fun car became a military vehicle. Huh. That's usually the way it happens. Stumble on a great idea, trying to do something different. 1899 Society Parisian Victoria Combination. The oldest French bicycle manufacturer was founded in 1876. 
They were based in Paris next to the Arc de Triomphe. 1898, they introduced a lightweight and expensive automobile, the Victoria Combination. It's a horse-drawn carriage, except with an engine to replace the horse. It says the engine is positioned on the front axle, a clutch pedal, two-speed gearbox, and brakes on the rear axle complete this automobile. That's a 1952 Delahaye. One of the oldest names, 1894, raced and won numerous competitions, including Le Mans. This last car, the 235, followed the pre-war uh, tradition. Body, steel, and aluminum was made by one of the most famous coach builders, Henry Chapron. Wow. And here we have another one-of-a-kind prototype. 1953 Talbot Lago. It was a competitor of the Delahaye on the road and on the racing circuit. Wow. Beautiful design. Here they have some promotional stuff. Looks like this is uh, the six Clavo. Hmm. Kind of an interesting sleek design. 1955 Clavo. Car is a prototype designed by Emile Clavo and presented at the Paris Auto Show in 1955. The car was exhibited but never tested. In fact, the gas tank was never installed. French collector named Jeanson rescued the Claveau from a salvage yard and was later bought by our museum and restored. So they also have a restoration facility on the premises that uh, is always working on new vehicles that will be in the museum. 1916 Owen Magnetic. Gasoline electric hybrid. Yeah, people are always amazed when I mention like that we had electric vehicles long before recent days. Oh, because it's just that area. Has a little bit of an interesting story behind it because it says Justice Ince was an electrician working for Thomas Edison and became fascinated by automobiles. So he left in 1890 from working for Edison and went to work for Electric Storage Battery Company, which introduced a battery-powered electric taxi in 1897. And then Ence designed a gasoline-powered car with an electric transmission. And that is also an Owen Magnetic, a 1917, kind of a full body. Look at their emblem. That's really neat. This is a 1930 Tracta E. We've already seen one of the Tractas earlier. Beautiful. God, what a beautiful design. Now this is a 1929 Tracta A. And it says it participated in the 1930 24-hour Le Mans and won. It was the winner. And they have it memorialized on the artwork above. Look, it's got that 27 in there. That is awesome. How cool is that? See a car that won Le Mans and is memorialized up here. That's awesome. Here's a photo from Le Mans and there's the 27 car right there. That's an amazing piece of history. The Le Mans car, a Le Mans winner, that is huge. So there's actually four tractor cars entered the 1929 Le Mans. Only two finished. Number 27, which is this one, was driven by Valen and Guaguar themselves in 1929 and 30. 
Gregoire placed first in his category in eighth overall in 1930 behind Bentleys and other big block engines. Other than a new coat of paint, the car remains original. The trunk and spare wheel were mandatory for racing at Le Mans during this time. Kind of is a bummer they have so much material kind of covering the front of the car, but that says that is a track to six. And then this one back here is the meal. The meal says the race car could be the very first Miller front wheel drive prototype leading to the Indy car. Huh. So it's kind of a, it says it's kind of a mystery race car. But they found some sort of emblem on the car that leads them to believe that's what it is right there in that photo. Apparently this one's for sale if you want to buy one of these beauties. A 1959 MG Roadster. Wow. Doesn't get much more beautiful than that, does it? Wow. I feel like Cary Grant should be riding around in that thing. Beautiful car. What a cool freaking collection they have here. This is really amazing. All right, we are leaving the first room, heading into this giant room in here. 1935 Georges Irat. Beautiful cars, I'm trying to keep my shadow out of them. We've got a 1965 Mustang all-wheel drive prototype. Huh. That's really cool. Prototype. But that thing is pretty pricey. Here we have a 1968 Ford Zephyr police car. A 1952 Hotchkiss Gregoire Cabriolet. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That is beautiful. Here we have a 1933 Rover. And then a 1950 Allard P1. Says that Allard was, Sydney Allard was famous for his race cars, such as the J2 with the Cadillac engine. Over here we have quite a few Hotchkiss Gregor cars. This one's a 1953 Coupe. And then this is a 1954 Hotchkiss Gregor sedan, Greg War. And a 1964 Studebaker Avanti, which they kind of wedged in there. It's a little hard to see the body style, but they're cool color. I don't know about that front end though, for me. Take a look at that. 1939 Emil Car Compound. That is beautiful. This is an aluminum frame. Look at that convertible. The back end kind of reminds me of like a 
Volkswagen bug kind of feel, but the front of it definitely is that old 30s feel. Here we have a 1955 Salmson, which is so that the makers of this originally was making airplane and different parts for the war, and then when the war effort required automo more automobiles, they turned to making those and then eventually opened up their own company. Here's the 1982 DeLorean. Skin made of stainless steel, same material that we use on packing machines. So the company that owns this museum owns the factory behind it, which is like a packaging, they do packaging supplies. And like I said, their passion for this is things that are innovative. And since they use the same type of stuff, they wanted the DeLorean in here. It's pretty cool. Of course, you know, probably most famous for being the time machine from Michael J. Fox. In Back to the Future. But here you can actually see one before it's been turned into that. Before Video Bob gets a hold of it. Then in 1936, Tatra. Like I said, all these cars are before my time. I'm not a car fanatic. I'm going to mispronounce stuff. Just enjoy yourself. Don't take it too serious. Here's a 1928 Ditra with the hood up. Oh, that's a beautiful car. Kind of like to see it with the things down. Award winner though, green ribbon. And here we have another 1937 Arrow. This Greenwood is a 1929 Ford Model A. Very famous car. Gas, gasogene system hydrogen. What? <laughs> 1927 Hanomag made in Germany. Very thin car, kind of a high roof, but look inside these weird box, almost bread truck type windows. You have like a wooden steering wheel, seating for two. The name of the car right there. The beauty in cars is how different the body shape is, I think. To me, I love it variety. Over here we have a bunch of, it looks like the Tatras. That's a 1967 Tatra, which I like it. I don't know. It's just different enough I, I like it. Like look at the crazy front and then look at the back. <laughs> it's kind of got the start of a fin in a way. I don't know. Just interesting enough to be interesting. Yeah. Here's a 1950 Tatra, which I love the colors. And from what I could see of the, the back end, just kind of like swoop straight down. I like that, let's go take a look at it. And then look at the back. That's pretty cool actually, I like that. I like the backs of these. There's a 38 Tatra. And then a 42, which has like a shark fin. The color is amazing. The color's cool. You got your sunroof. But look, it's got kind of like a shark fin. I'm not really sure what to say about this one. <laughs> 1935 Tatra 77A. They haven't restored it, so there must be a reason.
Wow, look at that. Look at the interior. Interesting choice. Wow. Wow. Talk about a luxury car. That is a beauty, 1929 Ruxton. Ooh, 1929 Cord Bro Am. I should have known better. I was just at the Automobile Museum where the Cord Factory was, so should have recognized this. Wow, beautiful. Look at this one. Never seen that. Never seen those coming out of there like that. That's an award winner. That's a 1937 cord. Man, that's beautiful enough that Batman could have used that. Wow. That is an interesting car. Those are just so weird to me, though. Look at the interior like grape that is a 1917 Franklin never heard of it beautiful car though you got your little sunshade here perfect for your Florida weather Look at the door handles. Next we have some sort of Mercedes. Or Benz. I don't know when that all came to be, but 1936 Mercedes. Kind of an odd Volkswagen bug look to it, right? Not completely, but I mean, it has that kind of a feel to me. Much bigger on the inside. The interior is really cool though. Look at that. Here's a 1934 Stower and a 1933 Chenard Walker. I like the hood ornament. Then a 1933 Derby L8. That is also awesome. Wow. I love that style. Love the colors too. The wood trim. Look at all the wood trimming around it. That is really cool. Look at that beautiful car. Wow. I like the horns. <laughs> Says that the Derby only made 10 cars total. And all of them had different body styles. So this is also one of a kind. And over here, 1928 Alvis, which how cool is that? <laughs> that is awesome. A lot of the innovation with these obviously is the engine or the time period, but since, you know, the video would be forever long and I just 
don't understand all that. I'm just going to share the coolness of the looks of the cars. Like, look at this hood ornament for the Alvis. Bunny. That's a 65 Chevy Corvair Corsa. The Nader car. <laughs> I like the color. Unsafe at any speed. You have the Ralph Nader book in there. When Ralph Nader put that book out, he basically claimed that uh, the swing axle for this car made it a road hazard, accident prone. This beautiful car, this long stretch car, is a 1926 Lancia Lambda S7. Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. <laughs> beautiful car though. Made in Italy. Look how long that is. Oh, it's got two front seats. It's got a third seat here and then fourth, fifth seat, maybe even six seats back there. Three seats in the back, depending on how small people were back then. Beautiful car. No cool hood ornament on it though. Then surprisingly, there's a 1970 Mazda. First Mazda to bear the Cosmo name. Look at the design of it. This is fewer than six of these were ever imported to the United States. Oh, wow. 1953 Jensen. Another one-of-a-kind prototype. This is entered production in 1954. Widely considered to be the best-looking car ever to emerge from West Bromwich. Styled after Jensen's Eric Neal. It was not just attractive, it was highly aerodynamic with a CD figure of just 0.39, one of the lowest recorded at the time. Wow. Here's a 1973 Citroen, which is interesting. We hadn't seen any for quite a while, and it still kind of has that crazy slooped body style in the back. And that is a 1935 Audi. The Audi Front 220 was Europe's first car to combine front wheel drive with a six cylinder engine. Production for just under two years. It was replaced in 1935 by the Audi Front 225 featuring a larger cubic engine. So that's, uh, that's why this is such a rarity. Wow, that was a beautiful car. There's your old Audi Auto Union, it says. And there's a Citroen Sahara. <laughs> wow, really cool collection. That is a 1922 Milburn. Looks like it's electric. Yeah, definitely an electric car for 1922. And look at the interior. Here's your steering wheel right there. You have a guest seat right there, but yeah, those two levers right over there. That's how you're going to steer. All right, my friends, I want to thank Mid-South Explorers and Atomic Hive for becoming my newest Patreons. 
and thank you all for watching the Tampa Bay Automotive Museum. We will see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye.